Thank you very much. Yeah, I want to thank the uh, organizers who have worked so hard to put this together. Uh, great group. Uh, my name is Jim Hurd. I'm with the Green Science Exchange, and I'm based in uh, San Francisco, California. Um, I work with startup companies, and so I was asked to talk a little bit about what are some of the leading corporations and what are some of the leading startups that are going on not only in green data centers, but also in green IT today. Um, and one of the things that I do is to look at what causes the sparks in startups early on, what causes the unusual synergies, um, because those can sometimes drive transformational change or exponential change, uh, which we see technology doing quite often today. Um, we uh, sometimes forget that uh, uh, when a, uh, an individual left Harvard, uh, Bill Gates, uh, to start a small company, he said uh, it was during the time there were four personal computers in, in the world, and he said, Paul Allen, Allen and I uh, were afraid we were too late not to participate but to dominate. And he went out and transformed the nature of the personal computer and the computing business. Um, so to start, we look at uh, green data centers. What has driven gr the growth of data centers has been the huge initiatives toward cloud computing that have been very successful and have really uh, helped people. And one of the examples of uh, cloud computing is web-based email rather than having it resident on your computer. Now you hope the, uh, that you, uh, d you know, don't have uh, downtime, uh, which can occasionally happen, but uh, we're, we're able to uh, get into our email now from anywhere by sitting in front of a computer that's connected to the internet. In addition, we're seeing the trend toward uh, uh, not using hard drives toward keeping all of our saved data up in the cloud. And these are just a couple of examples of how we've moved toward a cloud computing um, uh, approach, and that has driven exponential growth in the need for data centers. Um, one initiative that um, uh, started in 2007 in February was the Green Grid Initiative where major companies, including IBM, Intel, Microsoft, HP, AMD, and Dell, got together and started to talk and work on these things. And um, uh, Google, in 2007, did an interesting thing. They took a certain percentage of their uh, revenues and put it into a, a Google.org, and one of the things Google.org did was to create a venture capital fund and one of the biggest initiatives of that was called RE less than C, renewable energy less than coal-fired electricity. So they started to invest, um, you know, uh, monies into companies that could maybe within 10 years make renewable energy less expensive um, without any government subsidies, of course, uh, than coal-fired electricity. So, you know, we've got another seven years to go and we'll see if we get there. Uh, some people say that wind um, with subsidies is starting to uh, get close to that. Um, and we're seeing uh, huge initiatives uh, in China and the US on wind. Um, one interesting thing we've seen is uh, in the big data centers is what is the power source that is powering the electricity and for example, uh, Google has one data center with uh, 475,000 square feet in North Carolina, and it's powered by 50% coal, 38% uh, nuclear, and 5% renewable. Yet uh, they also have a second plant in Oregon data center that is 206,000 square feet. And that one is 34% coal, and 50% renewable. So that's a trend to watch. What is the uh, makeup, uh, the, the percentage of power being used? It's also good to watch the standards evolve because the standards define 
the highways for the industry. We've heard about PUE, power usage effectiveness. We've also heard about ASHRAE, American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. But keep an, eye, keep an eye out because recently Microsoft, Google, and Amazon and others have come out against um, the limitations that ASHRAE imposes in certain types of uh, equipment purchases. I'm not up on the details, but it's interesting to watch the evolution of standards, who gets behind what, because they have an important shape on the industry. Um, Fannie Mae has built a building in 2005, 240,000 square feet, that has uh, saved $1.7 million since it's uh, been opened. So let's take a look at green data center startups for a minute. We've got one good one, uh, you know, uh, that's presenting this afternoon, Elliptical Mobile Solutions, which is doing uh, very good things out of Phoenix, Arizona, and active uh, not only in the US, but in doing some things in Singapore, Vietnam, India, Israel, and Germany. We also have uh, an example of uh, one is uh, Greenhouse Data Center in Cheyenne, Wyoming, which gets all of its power from only wind generation, and it is uh, not any more expensive, and it's 60% more efficient than traditional. So these are the kinds of things to keep an eye on. On uh, Green IT for Smart Grid, they're really, it's a highly competitive, fascinating area to watch with Silver Spring Networks, which is doing smart metering, demand response, and distributed generation tracking. Um, and they're working with leading utilities like Florida Power and Light, Pacific Gas and Electric, and Pepco. Uh, Gridpoint is another. Both of these companies have raised large amounts of venture capital. And they're um, used doing software to manage distributed uh, sources of load, storage, and generation. There's an interesting one out of uh, Silicon Valley called OSI Soft which is doing, uh, has 14,000 installations for data management in oil and gas, power, pharma, chemical, and paper and pulp industries. And they're doing some fascinating things in China and Asia. And one of the top data center uh, liaison guys from EPA just left EPA to go join uh, OSI Soft. So these are some of the different companies that are up to interesting things. Uh, Constellation Energy in this general area won a $450 million smart grid stimulus award to put in smart meters for Baltimore, uh, Baltimore Power. So that's a good thing to watch. So also keep an eye on uh, the green IT in the network car area. We've got a better place, Shy Agassiz's company that raised a C round of $350 million recently that's uh, helping to organize how power flows to parking meters in major cities. And we have a major initiative between Microsoft and Ford on the home energy software to manage uh, electricity in your car and in your home. Um, keep an eye on uh, the office and home power data management. Of course, Microsoft's initiative is one. And watch what GSA is doing. They're handling the $5 billion in stimulus to retrofit government buildings to make them more energy efficient. Uh, keep in mind the, the green IT around carbon emissions data. You're going to have who's going to be running the carbon exchanges, who are running the carbon exchanges, and how are they managing that, and who, and who is tracking the uh, the emissions of various uh, companies that are making the things that uh, we're all keeping an eye on. Lastly, the atoms to bits trend we're seeing with ebooks and Kindle that books don't need to be printed and don't need to be shipped. Well, we may end up with a few few less jobs as a result, but it also cuts down on uh, carbon emissions from these things. I want to take a quick sec to tell an unusual little story that um, a friend of mine who tells me on very highly unusual things 
happened to tell me the story three years ago, and I'll make this very short. He said to me three years ago, you know the Lieberman-Warner bill? You know, and by the way, this is a complete hearsay story I'm sharing with you, which I think you'll find interesting. It takes about 30 seconds to tell. The Lieberman-Warner bill, why was Senator John Warner's name on that bill? I mean, he wasn't that well known for being so uh, driven about carbon. Um, and the story goes that two years before, about five years ago, he went home one night and he happened to see his fav favorite granddaughter and the granddaughter said, you know, Grandpa, you know, I've been, I've been studying in school and I'm really worried and upset about global warming. And until you put a bill into Congress to stop global warming, I'm not going to talk to you. Well, I heard this. This guy tells me a lot of stuff. I think that's cute. That's funny. And I filed it away. Last spring, I went to the House hearing where Al Gore and Senator John Warner testified on climate change about the Waxman Markey bill. And after about two and a half hours of testimony, one of the later people who was asked was a Democratic congresswoman. And she took, you only get five minutes, so every, every minute counts. And she said to Senator Warner, um, you know, I heard that you were influenced by members of your family in your approach on, on carbon. And he, you know, he wasn't going to say in front of all these people, some of them were very antagonistic to him, that he, you know, he sort of said, no, well, no, 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 I mean, I've cared about this for a long time. Well, fast forward a week later, and I'm at a meeting that the Danish put on in Washington on the Hill in the run-up to Copenhagen. There's a very good panelist from the Wall Street Journal who's following the whole carbon run-up to Copenhagen. Afterward, I'm talking to him, I mention it to him, and he looks at me and says, you know, I've been trying to get that story out of John Warner for a year now. Well, that's the end of the story, but where there's a little smoke, sometimes there may be a fire, there may be some ring of truth. So the point is, transformational change can come from unusual places. I'm on the faculty of Singularity University out of Mountain View next to Google. It was started by Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis of the XPRIZE. Ray Kurzweil is a legend with Silicon Valley a venture capitalist because he has talked for many, many years about exponential change and how that is different from linear change. Many times we see linear projections toward the future. And Francois really focused on this near the end of his talk today from Microsoft, talking about how uh, you know Moore's Law and others are exponential or close to exponential, and you have to be you have to be on top of things when exponential change happens. So, um, to finish up, I would say uh, green IT is just starting to hit the front of the bell curve. So get plugged in. Buckle up, this is going to be quite a ride. Thank you.